Good morning, it's Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Today I want to talk about the new Ground Zero GZCF 6.5 SPL. It's a speaker we're very excited for. It's a pro audio coaxial that's weather resistant, specifically made for motorcycles. So uh, since we do a ton of Harleys here, we're very excited about this. What people don't realize is a pro audio coaxial is very, very important when you're doing motorcycle audio. With most of the competition bikes and these big builds, they're doing separate pro audio drivers, separate horn tweeters. But a lot of these companies have ignored the biggest part of the market, which is the people that just want to do a factory upgrade. They want everything to maintain the factory look. They want everything hidden behind the factory grills. And that's where the coaxial comes into play. When you're upgrading a factory Harley speaker or boom audio speaker, it's a coaxial so if you just want to be able to hear your bike on the highway over the exhaust and over the wind noise you just want a drop-in speaker that will give you highs from the tweeter mid-range and mid-bass from the woofer so a lot of these pro audio companies don't offer coax and ground zero offered one that wasn't weather resistant so it was loud it didn't play below 250 hertz so it wasn't really an option that we could use for bikes they have now fixed that problem so on the table i have all the pro audio motorcycle rated coaxials that we deal with and i started to make a video last year uh head-to-head -head competition of the four most popular the reason i never finished the video is i realized it wasn't really fair wasn't really an equal comparison because some of them did not fit the factory location some just wouldn't have worked on a Harley at all, unless maybe lowers, such as the uh, Marine speaker from Hertz. So it wasn't really a fair comparison. The Ground Zero Quax at the time wasn't weather resistant. So I never finished the test because we weren't really comparing apples to apples and every single one of them required major modification to make it work. So I'm glad we waited because now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drivers that we can put head to head that could all be made to fit with no, no to minimal modification but today we're only going to be talking about the ground zero uh, i'm going to try and have the video done for the other drivers by next week that way i could actually compare all of them play them all against each other and then let you choose which one works the best for you uh, on the ground zero speaker i immediately noticed that it looks a lot like our most popular driver the Mats PA601 coaxial is by far, it outsells everything that we sell 10 to 1, only because most of the stuff that we do is a factory upgrade, four speaker system. So then the two most popular options for us is the Hertz Neo because of a drop and fit, no modification, street glide, road glide, 13 and down, 14 and up. It, it just fits, it works well. But um, this just came out a couple of months ago before they only offered the model it did not have the tweeter that is why the mats was the best selling speaker for us so now these two are two most popular best selling speakers because obviously they're coax they fit let's say you're doing a two speaker setup your bike only came with two speakers you're only interested in two speakers you don't want to drill holes in the fairing to mount separate tweeters coaxial is basically your only option and these both handle a ton of power so now ground zero has thrown their hat in their ring and came out their own version. Very similar to the mats, uses a ferrite magnet, unlike the Hertz that uses a neo magnet. Uh, the Bema is available in the neo. The Diamond neo. Uh, the Polk Audio also a neo, and the Rockford Fosgate is also a neo. More about that next week. Uh, as I compare the Ground Zero to the Mats, the Mats has a 6 decibel Proctor crossover with a little protection on the tweeter in case you overdrive it. The Ground Zero did a little bit better. It has a 12 decibel Proctor crossover. I'm excited to put these two head to head because just by looking, it looks like the Ground Zero has a Mylar type tweeter and the Mats has a aluminum titanium looking tweeter so I expect the match tweeter to be louder but with the 12 decibel proactive crossover ground zero tweeter should be more efficient should be able to handle more power so it's going to be interesting to see these two against each other 
Um, it made it a little bit deep, which means you're definitely going to have to heat or cut the pod to get it to drop into a street glide or road glide fairing. But uh, we have a test pod right here that we're going to use. We're going to drop it in there and let you know exactly what we have to do to make it fit. For those of you guys that want to buy amp it, you can cut the crossover. You can cut the connection here and go directly into the crossover and do the tweeters on channel one and two and the woofers on channel three and four of your four channel. So that's a non-issue. Um, out of all these, the Diamond has the best crossover network because it is a 12 decibel per octave. You see you have a cap and a coil and they also give you the resistor in case you want to reduce the output. So Diamond by far makes my favorite crossover if you're not going active and you don't have a DSP. But that is a non-issue now that we have our prototype tweeter crossovers, which are also 12 decibel per octave, and you can use with any of these speakers. More on that next week. So I know Dorian from Blaze Cycles has already installed them. He just delivered a really nice bike that had four of these on a 2400.4. So he's running four of these on the front two channels and the rear two channels running 210s. So these have enough output to keep up with a set of ground zero 10 yellow baskets running 1200 watts. So that means these are really, really efficient. He only had four of these speakers on the bike. I'm gonna post a link to his video so you can hear it. Uh, my test is gonna be on the test bench. His test was outside on a motorcycle. So you get to hear both. The, been waiting on the speaker for a while. Um, we've been kicking around prototypes for about 12 months now. Uh, I think they really did a good job. It's weather resistant like the mats. It has an identical rubber boot around the bottom of the tweeter to keep water out of the voice coil gap. So we're going to throw it on the test bench and see what this puppy sounds like. Then we'll run some baseline numbers and see what the frequency response looks like and see how much power we can get into it. Good looking speaker. Looks like it's gonna take a ton of power. Let's see how well it does. Okay, so we're running pink noise through the speaker and it's exactly what we expected to see. A 12 decibel per octave crossover has a nice steep drop off. So where most of these tweeters are crossed over at 10K, this one crossed over at 5K. So we're getting much better sound uh, check it out on the screen. So that's our signal going in. 20 hertz, 20,000 hertz. And that's a signal going to the tweeter coming out of the crossover. So you see, we're playing right down to about 6.3K. crossed over doing a nice job of blocking anything below 5k going to the tweeter so most of these start blocking at 10k to protect the tweeter since it's a since we have two components here we have a cap and a coil we get a nice 12 decibel per octave so that's more information for the tweeter without blowing it up so most in most scenarios it equates to a better sound all right so we've modified the pod to make the speaker fit So it sits nice and flush now. I'm not a big fan of heating the pod. Some people like to heat the pod. The reason I don't like heating the pod is when you heat the pod, the magnet ends up sitting directly against the plastic. And then as you're playing bass, as the speaker resonates and vibrates, it causes the pod to vibrate. So I like to use um, sound deadener to seal this back up, especially the sound deadener has foam on the outside. So that way we have no resonance between the pod and the fairing because there's a coating of foam that presses directly up against the fairing and then the aluminum butyl rubber part goes around the magnet and seals up the pod. That's just my personal preference. If you want to heat the pod, you can. I recommend that you put a couple of layers of duct tape on the magnet. As you heat the pod, it'll push the pod out. And then once you peel the tape, you have that little 16th of an inch gap so it doesn't touch. All right, here's the pod deadened. We either use Stinger Roadkill Ultimate or Sound Shield. 
are the two that we like to use. So it's got the nice foam on the outside that comes in contact with the fairing. And then on the inside, it's got your standard Buddha rubber and aluminum sheeting. So now the speaker fits right in. We're good to go. You can go ahead and test it. Okay, she's definitely loud. Um, the tweeter is a lot quieter than I expected it to be on the RTA. I'm sure they did that for a reason, so it blends better with the mid. It plays down pretty low. Um, free uh, In the pod, running pick noise played down to about 85, 90. So let's see how it does playing music. Okay, so we put the Ground Zero new Yellow Basket Coax through its paces. Um, so here are my feelings on it. They did a really, really good job on it. What I was afraid of was that the performance was going to be similar to stuff we were already carrying, and that was not the case. So I had made an assumption, and it turned out I was right. The Yellow, the yellow Basket, legendary, mid-base driver, everybody runs them. Uh, what I like about Ground Zero is they make it very simple. If you're running the red basket, that gives you upper mid-range. If you run the black basket, that gives you a mix between the yellow and the red. So it gives you decent mid-range and decent mid-base. Yellow basket, lower frequency, mid-base. So what they did was, and I assume they wouldn't, they did. They made the basket yellow. So they took stuff from the yellow basket, incorporated into the coax, and gave it a tweeter. The reason that's important is everything else that I offer needs to be backed up with a mid-base driver. So now it gives me different options for my clients. So I can offer them if my client's only gonna do a four speaker setup and is definitely not gonna do mid-base drivers or eights in the bags. This is a really good solution because these play down pretty damn low. So I was looking at the boxes to the other coaxes that we carry and a lot of them don't play below 100. This one plays down to 50, we verified it and uh, we had it on a 800.4 bridge, so they handle power. That little dip that we saw in the upper tweeter range makes sense because since the speaker can handle power and since it can play down to 50 hertz in the proper enclosure with a steep crossover slope, that means that the tweeter needs a little more protection. So what they did was back off the output of the tweeter. That way, when you run a ton of power to it, let it play low, it protects the tweeter, keeps it from blowing up. The only problem with that is if you're not running it on big power, the tweeter's not gonna be really bright. Um, so you can fix that by pulling the crossover off the back of the tweeter or um, adding our tweeter network and changing the attenuation on the tweeter or there's a couple of different ways around that. But on all in all, it's a good drop in speaker, has tons of mid bass, um, little modification to the factory pod and you can get it to drop in, see right there. Uh, if you're doing a four speaker bike and I would recommend a 1200.4, these things will sound great. Uh, like the fact that they came out with it, I'm happy now because now it's not a replacement to the speakers that we currently offer. It's going to be in addition to our arsenal. So now we'll be off, able to offer a six and a half coax with a ton of mid bass, which none of the other coaxes that we offer have. Um, so I'm really happy. I think they sound really good and they handle a ton of power. They're going to be out soon within, they've been promised me that within the next couple of weeks, these speakers will be shipping. So, uh, two thumbs up. It's a really good speaker and, uh, 
give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Um, give me like a week or two. I'll put together a review on these other speakers. I know everybody wants to hear about the Bama Coax. So we're going to put it up against the Diamond Coax and the Hertz Neo Coaxes.